The American Southwest is under extreme water distress. A years-long drought has not only impacted the region directly, but also the region's primary water source such as the Colorado River. Because of this, there have been renewed calls for additional aqueducts to be built. So what if the United States built a water pipeline from the Mississippi River to the American Southwest? Today's episode is sponsored by NordVPN, the easiest and fastest way to browse securely. Now, oftentimes I need to dig deep in order to research for my videos. And unfortunately, not every website out there is secure and that can leave my information vulnerable. But with NordVPN, I can go wherever I want with peace of mind. NordVPN allows you to connect to over 5,600 servers around the world with just a single click. And if that's not enough, they also have an auto-connect option to ensure that you are browsing safely and securely. And with the added feature of threat protection, you're double secure. Beyond security, NordVPN servers are simply blazingly fast, allowing you to surf anywhere you want with no speed degradation. Are you traveling abroad but don't want to miss out on the latest episode of your favorite TV show? NordVPN's got you covered. Plus, as part of this sponsorship, you can get four months of NordVPN for free with a two-year plan. Just visit nordvpn.com slash wigeography to get in on this deal. And if you end up not liking it, simply cancel within 30 days and you can get a full refund. So what are you waiting for? NordVPN provides the most comprehensive security of any VPN platform out there. Once again, visit nordvpn.com slash wigeography to take advantage of this exclusive offer. Hello and welcome to What If Geography, where we try and answer the great geographic what if questions of the world. Today we're talking about another water pipeline, only this one instead of coming from the Great Lakes, it's going to come from the Mississippi River. But before we get into today's episode, if you're interested in the Southwest water issues, be sure to check out the podcast of the same name. Join me and Hunter Shoby as we take a hard look at the Southwest water issues and what if it actually ran out of water. New episodes premiere every Wednesday, and you can listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. And as a new announcement, I'm officially going to bail on Twitter. If you want to follow me outside of YouTube, you can do so at my new Substack newsletter. There you'll find maps, fun interesting tidbits about the episodes that I create, and additional geography content. All of this delivered right to your email. So subscribe today. The American Southwest is a naturally dry place. It probably comes as no surprise that basically the entire region we're talking about today is a desert. And today, this desert is drying out. While Arizona, Nevada, and California have been able to sustain themselves through large quantities of groundwater reserves and aqueducts from the Colorado River, that is quickly no longer becoming a possibility. You see, the region as a whole, and truthfully much of the western half of the United States, is currently undergoing a mega drought that has been made much worse by climate change. At the same time, Arizona and Nevada have seen explosive population growth over the last few decades. This has caused a strain on water resources from both ends. Water is, to put it lightly, becoming a rare commodity for the region. But while it's easy to blame the millions of people, their single-family homes with perfect green lawns, and Phoenix's many, many golf courses, all of that combined does not take up even half of Arizona's available water. Instead, the primary culprit is agriculture. Agriculture uses somewhere around 74% of all available water in Arizona. This is used to grow things like alfalfa, hay, corn, cotton, wheat, citrus, olives, and potatoes. As a reminder, Arizona is primarily a desert, and the state is currently using a lot of that water to grow things within much of this desert. You can see how the water math doesn't really add up here. It's for this reason that Arizona relies on water from outside the state to add to its supply. Since 1922, Arizona and the whole American Southwest region in general has relied heavily on the Colorado River. This agreement, termed the Colorado River Compact, divided the river into the upper basin and lower basin. For the upper basin, the water is split amongst Colorado, which gets 51.75% of the available water, Utah with 23% of the water, Wyoming with 14%, and New Mexico with 11.25%. Arizona also gets a very small portion of the upper basin's water. For the lower basin, the water is split between California, which receives 58.7% of the water, Arizona with 37.3%, and Nevada with 4%. In addition to these states, Mexico is allocated about 10% of the total volume of water from the entire river. 
and much of this water is delivered via aqueduct to both the Phoenix and Los Angeles metro areas directly from the Colorado River. In fact, the concept of a pipeline bringing water from another part of the country is not a new one. In addition to the aqueduct from the Colorado River, both California and Arizona have over a dozen aqueducts, many of which are well over 100 miles in length. Of course, that's small potatoes compared to the over 1,200 mile pipeline that would be required from the Mississippi River. That said, aqueducts are also not a new technology. As humans, we have been moving massive amounts of water around since the Roman Empire. So moving water over great distances would not be impossible, but it would be a huge challenge. A water pipeline from the Mississippi River to the American Southwest could be a solution to an increasingly dry and arid climate. But much like a water pipeline from the Great Lakes, it would not be an easy solution. Granted, the terrain would be a little easier to manage. But before we get into the costs and geographical ramifications of a water pipeline from the Mississippi River, if you're enjoying this video, now would be a great time to subscribe. More fun what if geography videos are just a single click away. The mighty Mississippi is a truly massive river. To give you an idea of just how big the Mississippi River is, near Baton Rouge, Louisiana, an average of 593,000 cubic feet of water moves down the river every single second. To put this in perspective, the Colorado River, which currently sustains multiple cities and states, including Phoenix and Los Angeles, has an average discharge of about 22,500 cubic feet of water per second at Topak, Arizona. This is before the water is diverted to both LA and Phoenix via their respective aqueducts. All that's to say, the Mississippi River discharges a lot of fresh water into the Gulf of Mexico. And that's because the Mississippi River is fed by so many other major rivers. The Ohio River, Missouri River, Arkansas River, White River, and Illinois River are all major tributaries to the Mississippi. And each of those tributaries has a larger average discharge than the Colorado River, which again sustains the American Southwest almost by itself. And there are thousands more rivers on top of those that feed directly into the Mississippi River or a tributary of the Mississippi River. When all is said and done, the Mississippi River watershed is over 1.1 million square miles in size. To put that in perspective, the United States as a whole is just a hair over 3.5 million square miles. All that's to say is that the entire region of the Mississippi River watershed is one that generally has an ample amount of water overall. And if all this water is just going to flow into the ocean anyway, why not divert some of it to places that could make better use of it? Or so the line of thinking goes. But it's really not that simple. A water pipeline from the Mississippi River to the American Southwest would easily be one of the most expensive infrastructure projects in U.S. history. To put this in perspective, when the Colorado River Aqueduct was built to bring water from the Colorado River to Los Angeles, it required a $220 million bond in 1933. The Colorado River Aqueduct is also only about 242 miles long. All else being equal, if this aqueduct was built today, it would cost over $5 billion. That's very expensive even by today's standards, but it would be much more expensive for a pipeline to be built from the Mississippi River. And the primary reason why it would be so much more expensive? The price of land. Land is no longer a cheap commodity as it once was in the 1800s and early 1900s. To use rail as an example, both the California and Texas high-speed rail projects are laying down track within their respective states. And the cost of the land to physically build the track has proven to be the most expensive aspect of each project. This is despite the vast majority of the land being uninhabited. Going back to our pipeline from the Mississippi River, an aqueduct of the same volume would be needed at a length of at least 1,200 miles and we can make a rough estimate of what that pipeline would cost. At a minimum, given that a 242-mile aqueduct would cost $5 billion, it's easy to assume that a pipeline from the Mississippi River to the American Southwest would cost almost $25 billion. But that's basically a straight line, and without factoring in modern-day land ownership and costs and terrain difficulties. When all is said and done, a water pipeline at this length built for anything less than $100 billion would be nothing short of a miracle. And there's an actual real-world precedent for this. Beginning in 2003, China began what is today called the South to North Water Transfer Project, wherein the country is attempting to move water from its wet and rainy southern part to its drier north where its capital city of Beijing lies. When completed, the longest portion of this aqueduct will be about 750 miles long. And, as of 2014, more than $79 billion have been spent on such an endeavor. China, being a communist authoritarian country, has much more legal leeway into taking land for projects like this, so they are inherently able to spend much less. The United States has no such luxury, so any financial costs would be much higher. 
And this doesn't even account for the environmental cost. A water pipeline from the Mississippi River to the American Southwest is a popular idea because it's a seemingly easy solution without any obvious negative side effects. But while it seems like taking a small fraction of the nearly 600,000 cubic feet of water that the Mississippi River discharges per second wouldn't cause much issue overall, that's simply not the case. Water, and especially fresh water, have created incredibly complex habitats that have formed over hundreds of thousands of years. As humans redirect those water resources, those habitats aren't able to adapt as easily. To illustrate this, let's go back to the Colorado River. The Colorado River has historically drained into the Gulf of California in Mexico, creating the Colorado River Delta. Today, however, water from the river rarely makes it that far, and the wetlands and estuary ecosystems that existed within that delta have since been destroyed. While the Mississippi River Delta is not in any immediate danger of a similar situation, it's worth highlighting that every region goes through dry spells. In fact, this year has seen record low water levels on the Mississippi River due to their own drought. If a water pipeline was built, the Mississippi River would be less able to weather these kinds of increasingly common natural disasters. A water pipeline from the Mississippi River to the Southwest United States is not a viable solution to the Southwest water issues. Simply moving water around only creates more issues down the road and can cause unforeseen consequences that we simply can't predict today. The real solution to the Southwest water issues lie in their own ability to conserve, regulate, and recycle the water that they have left, not take it from other regions. I hope you enjoyed today's episode on a potential water pipeline from the Mississippi to the Southwest. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. And if you want to watch more of my geography episodes, you can do so here. Thanks for watching. See you next time.